Hello, everybody. My name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show, where we talk all things talents in Connecticut. And on today's show, or rather tonight's show, I'm pleased to have on Sophie Hedge from Mercy. Uh, she plays basketball for the basketball program, and she is a senior, so she will no longer be playing, however, as they just came up short against New London. But she is going to be playing in college, and we'll be getting into that later on during this episode. But Sophie, I appreciate you coming on. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. You know, first and foremost, I just want to say we were kind of going back and forth with the Mercy program and the New London game, and it was a pleasure to be able to do Mercy basketball again. I did you guys a couple of years ago on the radio when you were at Holy Cross, and then being able to see you at Mohegan Sun, especially, I love seeing Coach Coe's coach because he gets, he's as fiery and passionate as any coach I've seen, and I'm sure you guys, you guys really played for him, but you also represented the program so well. Thank you so much. Yeah, Coach Coase is a great coach. He, his intensity, it really gets us going. And I think a lot of people think that he's probably like really mean off the court and like, because he yells so much, but he's, he's this, he's a sweetheart. I love him. So it's awesome. And there was one point during the game, and I don't know if your parents were watching the broadcast or if anybody said anything, but I, I forgot what quarter it was, but you got hurt a little bit. You got taken out for a couple minutes. You had to get stretched out, whatever. And I made the comment that you were tougher than a $5 steak because oh, yeah. the fact that you came back into the game after that injury, I told my partner, I was like, if I had that now, I probably would have to sit for a while. You were like, no, get me back in this game. We're, we're going to win yeah. this, or at least tr no, attempt to. Yeah, I'd do anything to win, honestly. And I had really bad cramps in my calves and it just, it hurt so bad to stand up. So I had to have my trainer stretch me out and try and put biofreeze on it. But mm -hmm. um, my coach calls me sonar because I can hear everything. So the second I heard him say Sophie, like he was just talking to my coaches, I ran to the score table because I just need to get in because I really wanted to win. But we fell short, but it was a great game. Now he called or called you sonar. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Now why why is that exactly? Where did that nickname he come makes from? A lot, he makes a lot of movie references and I don't know which movie it's from, but it's like um just this guy that can hear everything his lieutenant says. And I always repeat everything at practice and like during the games. So he just decided to start calling me that like my sophomore year. So it's almost like being a quarterback in a sense. Like if you were playing football, you wouldn't even need the headset because you could just hear the coach screaming even with all the fans right yeah well coach Coase is also really loud like you can't really not hear his voice but uh, I guess so yeah this is true I'm sure people in Middletown probably heard him at Mohegan that's for sure yeah definitely <laughs> so you know I want to ask as far as the the experience being at Mohegan I know I had a young man Gavin Rothenberg who played for Staples and he told me about the experience of the lights being dimmed during the national anthem hearing his name announced the, the just the overall experience of that uh take me into that because for players it had to be wicked cool I know it was for the broadcasters as myself was it was awesome yeah it was great I mean the ant anticipation leading up to it was it was so nerve wracking because you're at you're at the big stage now you're not at the Mercy High School gym you're not at the away team's gym you're at an arena where WNBA players uh, play and UConn plays. So it's just that environment, the anticipation leading up to it, it's so exciting. And then once you finally get there, the buses go like underneath the arena and you see like all the names of all the famous people that have been there. And then it's like, you're there too. And then you walk into the gym and it's like, all the lights are on. It's just huge. And then warming up, it's like, everyone's just starts piling in and we were we were worried about the game time because like eight o'clock on a Sunday night is really hard to get people there but we managed to get a lot of mercy people there and a lot of supporters even not for mercy so like hearing your name called after you do something and then just everything about it was just really nice I really loved it and I think another thing too is and I mentioned this during the broadcast that the five seniors that you guys grew up together I mean I think it was Gene Siracusa, who, fantastic last name, by the way, saying that makes it even sound better, right? As far as when she made yeah. shots and such. Um, talked yeah. about how the senior class, all five of you, uh, really wanted to get to this point. You guys talked about it. You dreamt about it. And to achieve that goal, even though Mercy came up short, just talk to me about that, because I'm sure it was talked about leading up to the game and even after the game. 
Well, from freshman year, the senior class, they're basically like my sisters. I've grown up with a lot of them for like my whole life, basically. And I played basketball with them. And ever since freshman year, that's been our dream. Like we want to make it to Mohegan Sun because we fell short. We've had a lot of rebuilding years because Mercy has always been a talented team. But, but once we came in, they lost eight seniors and we were starting five freshmen or three freshmen. So it was really hard with that. But we knew once we started getting like the progress that we wanted, we knew that we'd make it there, but we needed to get all the underclassmen on the same page. And doing that this year, that was our goal from the start at conditioning because we made a goal this year was either to win SECs, win states or win both. And just getting there, we didn't like, that's a goal, but a lot of people don't meet their goals or like expect to actually achieve them. And just getting there and like being there with my like sisters that aren't really my sisters. It was just a great experience. Well, it's, it's friends that you've made for a lifetime. And I think that's what makes sports so awesome is that you have the ability. I mean, there's still some friends that I made uh, playing baseball, not so much at the high school level, but for Legion ball, you know, summer ball, you know, when I play baseball mm -hmm. to be able to say that they're my friends even now. And I think that's an awesome thing to have because it's people, you know, people that you'll never forget. Uh, now, as far as the overall, just, you know, your four years at Mercy, right? I'm sure you've had time to really be able to now you know, after the all-star games, I know you played in that as well. And we'll get into that um, to kind of sit back for a second and kind of reflect. Have you had that time to be able to do that yet? Oh uh, yeah, I have. I've met with my coach because we talk about everything and we had a long conversation the other day about how, how like different it is now that we're not playing and the things we could have done differently, the things that we're proud of. And he's not really big on like personal accomplishments, but he said that he was really proud of all of us and like all of our hard work. And it's just, it's really different, but even though we ended with a loss, like it felt like a win in my book, just being there and just being like playing in that environment. Well, I think what, what was able to be accomplished, I know COVID kind of threw a monkey wrench and everything between that and then the shortened season following that. But I've always felt like Mercy has been a top contender for a long time now, as far as being one of the top teams when it comes to girls basketball. And I felt like even though the four years for you, again, COVID and everything else, it was a little wonky. The fact that you guys were able to not only compete, but at such a high level, I mean, for the seniors, too. I mean, that's quite an accomplishment. Yeah. And Coach Coase, he pushes us every day at practice no matter if we have a game day if we have a game the next day or if we're at shoot around we're always working hard we're always talking we're always running so um sophomore year I think that's when we really knew our potential because um we were undefeated until my sister tore her ACL but then that was when we were really forced to really work together because my sister was a great leader she was like the only only senior on that team so um we've kind of all collectively led uh together without like a senior leader for a whole year after that. So just doing that, it's just so great. And then we really realized our potential that year. And then the next year we were really building it up. And this year we finally reached it. So is there a particular game that either you played well, or maybe it was a team win that you'll never forget for as long as, you know, for as long as time goes? Um. Well, there's two. First it was um, sophomore year when we played Sheehan. We were really the underdog, like no one thought we were going to win. It was my sister's senior night and she had gotten ACL surgery the day before. So we all wanted to win for her. And she was sitting there and she was, she had her medication. So she was really tired. But after we really got together and we ended up beating them by like 10 points, they were like the number six seed. We definitely weren't ranked, but it was just such a big team win. And we really got that. And then this year when we played, um, Holy Cross and Sacred Heart because Holy Cross they had like a 42 game win streak and we had lost them last year or the year before so it was just really good to start the year like that and then when we beat Sacred Heart at home that's just always a great game because Sacred Heart and us we have um, it's just always a big atmosphere no matter where we're playing and just beating them at home was really great but we fell short to them uh, the two games after that. Is there a game personally for you that you felt like you were at your best no matter which year it was? 
that you're never going to forget. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was last year at Jonathan law. Um, I had 27 points. I think I've came close to reaching that like this year, but la- like, I just couldn't miss. It was really nice. Now, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I know as far as players who have games like that, they just knew, you know, maybe they woke up and they felt like, Oh, I'm just feeling good today. Or maybe just the day just felt like everything was coming into place. Like you aced all your tests, study hall was good. The bus ride was fine. I slept well, whatever the case may be. What was it about that day that made it so, in your case, special where you just couldn't miss? Everything was going in. Um, I'm not really sure because usually whenever I miss a lot in warmups, I make a lot in the games. And I was missing everything in warmups. Like, I really remember that. And um, like the second I started like running, my legs just weren't getting tired. So I just knew it was going to be a good game. Interesting. So if you're missing a lot in, in warmups, that means you're going to make more in the games, right? Yeah, it's like a weird superstition of mine because uh, before the SEC semifinals or quarterfinals, remember we played at Jonathan Law against Sacred Heart. I was doing like a shooting workout with my coach and I literally couldn't miss a single shot. But then once I got into the game, I think I made maybe one. So it was just like, it's just always a weird thing with me, but I try not to think about it during the games. So maybe you should intentionally start missing shots and warm up. So that way you can tell yourself, yeah. you know, tell yourself like, oh, I'm going to be fine once the game starts and I'll be good. Right. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely try that one. So now, even though you still have a couple more you know, months left before you graduate, I know college basketball is something that you have an opportunity to be able to do and you'll be playing with your sister, which is awesome. So and I know that was just announced just a couple of days ago. Um, talk about that really quick, because that's an awesome thing to see a player of any level, no matter the sport, continue their dream for another four years. Um, it's an awesome opportunity. And I had, like I said, I had decided like over the summer that maybe basketball wasn't right for me, but just playing this season and using it as an escape, it just being able to continue it for another four years with unfinished business for my last game. It's just more of motivation to get better and, I want to try and do double the amount I did this uh, past four years and get them a ring. So I really want to do that. And what is the school that you'll be going to? Uh, Western New England. And that is the school, as I mentioned before, that you'll be playing with your sister. And I think that's an awesome thing to be able to, and I'm sure you would get along with the teammates and such, but any adjustment for any freshman, right? No matter how talented it's, it's going to be that. And I know the structure classes being away from home, all of that. And I think to, you know, and you could speak to this, having your sister there to help kind of guide it, guide you and make it easier. I mean, you could speak to that. It should be hopefully an easy transition for you. Yeah, I think it will be. I mean, it'll definitely be challenging because going from a really small school, like I think I have about 60 people in my grade and then going to a college where there's just people everywhere, but being with my sister, me and her are like best friends, like we get along really, really well. And especially on the court, which is really nice, but even off the court, just like hanging out with her and having a home away from her home with her and being able to just go to her room and just talk to her. It's going to be really easy for me. Were you able to, and I know the, the announcement wasn't made. So I didn't, again, you were kind of wavering about, do I want to play? Do I don't want to play? Whatever the case may be. Um, Were you able to kind of pick her brain and use some of the college you know, knowledge that she was sharing with you during your senior year? Yeah, um, I ask her a lot of questions and she tells me a lot of things. So I kind of got a really good like inside gist on like how Coach Chazar is and how the team is and how the team gets along with everyone else on campus. And everything was really positive. And she said it was basically just a family and she loved every second of it. And she was injured too. So Mm -hmm. she didn't get a lot of playing time but now she's starting to get back into it because she's not injured anymore. So just hearing that from someone who's not playing that much, it just means a lot. Is there anything in particular that you are going to make sure that out of, you know, it could be defense, it could be your shooting, it could be free throw, whatever the case may be. Is there a part of your game that you want to make sure that when, once you step on the campus or in this case, step on the court that you want to be on your A game for that? Uh, definitely my off the dribble moves and my quickness on my feet, because um, 
I tend to trip a lot like during the games and like in practices. So just trying to be able to stay quick on my feet without falling, that's a big one. And then also my off the dribble moves because a lot of the coaches know that I like to catch and shoot. So being comfortable with not doing that, it's going to help a lot. I know it's early, but do you know what particular role you could potentially have with Western New England? Um, I think I'd be able to play a point guard or a shooting guard, but definitely not a post because I just wouldn't be good like in a collegiate level post. But I think I'd be really good at point guard, but I'd like to like learn from the former players right now. I think that's smart to have the awareness in knowing where you sit at the college level. And I'm sure you're thinking of that and you could correct me if I'm wrong is because of what your sister has told you and said, Hey, you may fit here or you could do this. Well, what says you? Uh, Yeah, definitely. Because she also talks to her coach a lot and I get to hear like, if they're talking about me, like what she says, stuff like that. So um, I get to know a lot of what the coach is thinking too, but also what my sister's thinking, what her teammates are thinking. And it kind of sways my thoughts a lot too, which is pretty good because I don't want to come in uh, blinded by what I think. Sophie, I really you know appreciate you coming on. A lot of fun being able to talk with you about Mercy and yourself. Before I let you go, um, do you have any final like a send off as far as for the program for Mercy, Coach Coe's, uh, any any uh, teammates of yours, anything like that before we sign off here? Um, well, once the season ended, I sent a text to my team and I was just saying that how insanely proud I am of us. Like we've come such a long way, spending every day together, not getting sick of each other and just being like best friends on and off the court. So I just want to make sure that with such a big senior class leaving, it really stays and it sticks and everyone continues to work hard and that Coach Coe's keeps doing what he's doing because it's going to really work for them. And I'm really excited to come back to Mohegan Center and watch them play. Now, real quick as well, because again, I could be seeing Mercy down the road, maybe even next year. Um, I know some of the younger players that played, um, and it should be a lot of fun because like you said, even though the five seniors are graduating, there are a lot of underclassmen who are on the roster that will be expected to have some opportunities. Um, anybody in particular I should be watching out for next season? Um, well, the our five subs that really go in a lot, like Mercedes Artez, um, I always butcher her last name, but I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. And then Kaylin McMahon Egan, um, Maddie Benigni, Kate Donlin, and then Winnie Chicarello. They're gonna be huge impacts next year. And I I just can't wait to watch them lead the team. Well, I can tell you, Artez, and I had to ask four times how to get that name right. So you came close. And Chicarello, Chicarello was a nice player. She's not very tall, but she some and mind you, you know, New London was very tall, as you know, but the way that she was able to kind of cut through the trees, I mean, for a young yeah. player, I think she was only, where is she? She's only a junior, so she's got one more year, but that was impressive to be able to do that. Yeah, she's extremely tough. And once her shot is going in once or twice, it's in for the rest of the game. And you can't really stop that with a shooter. So She's just got to keep getting in the gym, make sure that she keeps getting stronger, and she's going to be a great player next year. I'm excited. As you said, can't stop a shooter once the shooter's making shots. You yeah. being a shooter, you would know that. Yeah, thank you. But hey, Sophie, again, awesome being able to speak with you. Best of luck for the remaining months you have left at Mercy. And, uh, you know, best of luck as well, too, at college. And hopefully you'll be able to do what many other uh, girls basketball players have done at the college level and done very well at the women's basketball level. So once again, congratulations and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much. No problem. That'll wrap things up here on the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. Remember, CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm a journey find them all. Good luck to everybody and be well.